So, guys, before we dive into some conversation, some topic here, I uh, want to get a feel for the room. How's the focus level of everybody? How are you guys feeling? A bit tired after? Who's feeling a little bit tired? A little bit tired after lunch? Yeah, I thought so. Okay, who's down for some Wim Hof breathing? Who's down? Yeah! yeah. Who know, okay, who knows Wim Hof breathing has done it before? Wow, that's more than half. Amazing stuff. Okay, so we'll do it. It takes only a few minutes, so nothing, nothing special. So sit down, take a sit, seat back, put, put the stuff a bit away that you, you have some room for breathing, make some space, very nice. So what we're going to do is we do some energetic breathing to get some energy back into your bodies, okay? So just for, for you guys who no, doesn't know how it works, you take 30 breaths fully in, I try to imitate the Wim Hof voice, fully in, like this. So it doesn't matter if it's through the nose or the mouth. You can take the mouth, that's totally fine, okay? Fully in from the chest and the belly as much as you can. And then you release only a little bit. So it goes like this. And basically you, you take more in than you leave out. And then after 30 breaths, you can take a final long inhale and a final longer exhale if you want. And then you just sit down, relax, and you hold your breath. Okay? Just sit down, sit there, feel, feel your body, stay in the moment. Yeah? Feel yourself. You might feel some tingling and so on. And just hold it as long as you want. No pressure, nothing. When you get the urge to breathe again, you breathe in, hold it for 15 more seconds, and then you let go, okay? If you want, if you want, you can close your eyes while doing it. And then once you're finished, you can just open the eyes so I'll see kind of where you guys are at. Sounds good? Yeah. Anybody, any questions? Okay, I'll do like this. Uh, I'll set a timer. Let's see if we get some, some kind of rhythm going here that we're like, oh, oh. <laughs> let's see what we can do, okay? All right, uh, so strong inhales and then short Exhales, okay? I'll, I'll set a timer here on my watch. So, yeah, we do 30 breaths, and then I tell you more or less when these are over. So I'll, I'll set a timer for around uh, 30 seconds, okay? So, everybody ready? Everybody has space? Yeah. Okay, so, fully in. Let go. Find your own rhythm. Nice. If you count for yourself, you can just go for 30 and then stop. Okay, let's do five more breaths, everybody. Four. Three, two, one deep breath in and a deep breath out. Out, out, and don't breathe anymore. Just stay in your body. Feel the energy. Maybe you feel some tingling. Just be in your body. Thirty seconds in. If you have to breathe, just breathe in, hold it for fifteen more seconds and then breathe normally again. All right, we're close to a minute. Perfect.
Once you're finished, just open your eyes. So I know where everybody's at. All right. Everybody finished, I think, right? How do you guys feel? Was it good? Yes, yes! <laughs> All right, I think the next speech is by who? No, okay. <laughs> no, awesome, guys. So I just wanted to put this little one in to get you guys energized, get you guys ready, get you guys focused. This is actually something you can do more often. I recommend this either in the morning to get yourself energized. Then after that, a cold shower is also amazing because it's, it's a really nice combination because you get yourself more in your body, get more oxygen in your blood, and then the cold shower is also less intense for you. All right, so that's a nice one. Or when you have like an afternoon low and you want to re-energize yourself or you didn't get much sleep, a few rounds of those is also super helpful. Awesome, so where's my clicker? Oh, here. Perfect. So, <laughs> let me see what we got for today. So today, we're not gonna talk about Wim Hof breathing, but about something that it actually helps. Because what if there was one secret hack? What if there was one secret hack that helps you to build an amazing team, helps you 10x your sales, helps you work two to three hours less per day, and helps you to be the happiest you've ever been. What if there was such a hack? We're gonna talk about this in a second. So a little bit about me. I run consistent performance mentoring. We have, that's a coaching business. We help entrepreneurs level up the daily performance, their energy, so we can scale their business without burning out. Here we have a little picture from our group call. That's when Mr. Systems Marcel was explaining something here. Everybody was taking notes, super focused. That's what we do. And we also run, uh, we, we launched it recently, a mastermind where we do live events, in-person events, go really deep into certain topics. And that's what I do in my free time, like at the, at the live event, ice bathing, stuff like this. That's where the breathing comes into play as well. And then when I leave the, the ice bath, I make this, this face here. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's cold, it's cold. Anyway, so what's the one secret hack that helps, helps you to build, get all of these things? And you probably have seen the agenda for today already. That secret hack is sleep. So you probably have heard about the importance of sleep, right? But a lot of people, I think, in the entrepreneur space, they still underestimate how important sleep actually is. Okay, I want to tell you a quick story about how I actually got into this and my quick backstory about, about sleep. And I want to show you something. This was me seven years ago. Are you ready? Ready to see me seven years ago? <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> no, nothing, nothing too fancy. But actually, that was me seven years ago, university times. So I was the, the guy responsible for organizing the parties at our university. And that means, you can imagine, we did, of course, a lot of stuff here at daylight, like Oktoberfest. But most of the things we did was things like this and things like this. And so this was my usual habitat, 3 a.m. in the club. And so you can imagine, of course, what that means for your sleep, right? Not so good, not so much, not so high quality. And the other thing is also, first of all, guys, I want to know, who of you guys has been to university? Anybody has gone to? Oh, wow. Most of you guys. So you can imagine. Uh, who had also parties like this a lot at university? Yeah. We began at 3 a.m. What? Our parties began at 3 a.m. We began at 3 a.m. <laughs> yeah, but we were just getting started here, man. We were just getting started. <laughs> but I went to university in Russia. <laughs> <laughs> it explains everything. It explains everything. <laughs> There's levels. <laughs> But, but then you guys can probably understand even better than I how it feels when you come home at like 6 a.m., you had some drinks, you go to bed super late, you wake up at 12 or 1 or whatever, 
and then you feel like, oh, I want to go to the gym as well and train and so on. And you know the feeling when you go to the gym and you had a night like this before. It doesn't really work out that well, right? And that was for me at the time when I decided when I was getting more into fitness, more into self-development and so on, it was the time to really think about this more. And first I started to stop drinking alcohol. So I haven't drunk alcohol in seven years. You can count the times maybe on, on one hand. I drank alcohol in the last seven years. And uh, then I started to get more into uh, optimizing my sleep and so on, right? And that's led me to doing what I'm doing now. And this is me now, <laughs> 9.30 p.m. And a uh, lot of little gadgets here, blue light blockers. If you guys are wondering, these are nose strips that help you to get more air through your nose. And this is mouth, mouth taping, which helps you also to breathe better through your uh, nose and get better sleep, okay? So basically, I le learned a lot of stuff, tried out a lot of things over the years. <laughs> you don't have to look like this, like an alien, when you, when you go to sleep. Um, but that's why I want to present to you guys the most important things, really the fundamentals, the most important things that you can start implementing, maybe not tonight, but maybe from Monday. <laughs> maybe some of these things tonight as well. And so that you get better sleep, okay? So why, why is sleep essential? First of all, I mean, who of you guys has heard about the book Why We Sleep by Matthew Walker? All right, a couple of people, okay. Um, who of you, I, I can totally recommend you that book. And also, if you want to just a quick primer, check out the Joe Rogan podcast, Matthew Walker with Joe Rogan. Gonna blow your mind about studies, about sleep and so on. I want to just tell you a few things. Let's start with the downside of not uh, if you don't value your sleep as much as you should. Immune system and, and cancer, you're much more likely to develop cancer if you regularly sleep less than six to seven hours on a long-term basis. Your immune system is much worse, you're gonna get sick much more, and you have uh, the higher likelihood of, of developing diseases. Your Alzheimer's risk is much higher once you're older, when you don't sleep enough. Plus, your blood health, if you sleep a few hours in a row, less than like six hours, your blood levels, they look like you have diabetes. The blood sugar level is really disturbed. So you can directly see this. And then depression and anxiety. You have a much higher risk to, to have regular anxiety attacks and so on if your sleep isn't good or even develop depression. Then the thing is, you, you guys probably know like, okay, what does it take to be performing well to be healthy, right? The, three, the big three are usually, you know, sleep, diet, exercise, right? Very important. But actually, people found out, or with the recent research, they found out that sleep is the foundation for diet and exercise. Because if you don't sleep well, what happens? You're gonna have higher hormones like leptin and so on, which make you wanna eat more unhealthy food. So if you don't sleep well, you're gonna eat more trash. Then for fitness, the same thing. Of course, you're gonna, you're gonna be less performing in the gym. Plus, did you guys know that if you're trying to lose weight, and you're in a calorie deficit, right? You eat less than you consume, and you don't sleep enough, your body is more likely to burn muscles than fat. Because he, he's like, the hormones are so disturbed that he doesn't really take the fat. And that's, of course, something we don't want. Then, of course, why is it sleep essential? Because focus, alertness, and reaction time. A lot of guys, they think, well, I'm, I'm good, man. You know, I slept six hours, I'm focused, you know, my reaction time is good. I don't need to sleep more. But then these guys, they take, they take measurements for them. They make tests with them. They ask them, how well do you think you slept and how well are you recovered? And they say, yeah, super good, super good. And then they make tests for reaction time and they're super bad, right? So that's also the thing you have to think about. Only you thinking you're performing well and you're sharp doesn't mean you could be not performing higher, okay? And then, so what does optimized sleep mean? It means optimized focus and output for you guys in your business focusing on the right things and producing valuable output. It also means optimized decision making, right? You have lots of things that you have to decide on in meetings or strategy wise, making the right decisions and optimized learning and growth. This is super important because you get bombarded today with all these hacks about Facebook ads, about tracking, about agency stuff, e-com, business and so on. But if the next few days you're not gonna sleep well, you're gonna retain so much less than if your sleep was good. Because what happens in sleep, in REM sleep and so on, is memory consolidation and so on. Okay, so and that also means when you do courses and things 
regularly during the week. You need to sleep well. And of course, nowadays with corona and so on, if you sleep better, you're also going to simply get sick less. Just the common cold, you're going to get less. And you think about what would it mean for you guys if you, instead of, let's say, just four to five times per year, you just got sick once per year, right? How much more cool stuff could you do in that time? And then, apart from this, just energy and quality of life. It just feels awesome when your sleep is good. And so let's dive into the eight steps to master your sleep. What are the most important things you should get started with? Okay. So first thing that can be helpful, it's a starter, is to determine your sleep chronotype. Who has heard, have heard of this before? Who knows what a sleep chronotype is? One, the, the. Maybe let's make this interactive so you guys don't fall asleep. Yes. What are the sleep chronotypes? Can you tell us a bit more about this? are prone to when our high performance types are. Some, like me, I'm an early breaker, so I work super well at 5, 4 in the morning, and I work bed at 9, 8, that's fine. If you wake up others at 6 in the morning, they don't get started until 10 or 11, so yeah. it just doesn't work for them. And I suppose they have this test where you can find out which type you naturally are. Perfect, amazing stuff. What's your name? My name is David. David, awesome. Round of applause for David, everybody. Yes! <laughs> nice. So basically, that's exactly correct. There's four, four chronotypes, and it's basically based on your, on your natural tendencies, basically a little bit uh, predisposition by your DNA simply. It has evolutionary reasons that some people are more prone to falling asleep earlier than others or have, having alertness at different times during the day. And so you might have heard about these things. Dolphin, I'll show you in a second what these means, but these are usually the four groups. Okay, let's, let's make this a little bit now let's show you guys actually the next one here. I'm not sure it's not high, super high quality picture, but I'm going to show you the exact difference. Okay? So dolphins are usually light sleepers who are often diagnosed with insomnia. Who of you guys thinks he's a, he or she is a dolphin? No dolphins here? One? Maybe? So that's if you have really often a hard time falling asleep, you can't sleep really long. It's usually a small part of the population. It's not the most of them. So here not. Then lions are the ones, probably David, you're going to be a lion probably. That's just, if you wake up in the morning and you're usually like super energetic, you can already work super early in the mornings, right? And then in contrast, mostly in the evenings, you're super tired. You're like tired, like fuck man, I need to sleep, you know? And that's, that's lions. Where, where are the lions? Yeah, okay, quite a few lions here. Then we have, let's start with the wolf because the wolf is more, they have a hard time. That's what, what David said, they have a hard time waking up in the morning, they're more active at night, kind of, and they have the second wind a lot, right? That in the evening they get work done and they can focus really in the evening and crank out some, some quality work. Who of you guys thinks he or she is a wolf? Oh, a lot of wolves as well, as well. And then we have people which are kind of in between, which is the bear, and they are kind of more or less with the fall and rise of the sun, right? There's something in between, between the, the, the wolf and the uh, lion. Who of you guys thinks he's a, he or she is a bear? In between. Who hasn't raised the hand yet? <laughs> Everybody, okay. And of course, we have to say to this, this is not set in stone, right? You are not always perfect that type, but it gives you a rough direction. Why does it matter? Because depending on this, you should do things at different, different times. Let me give you a great example. For, for wolves, you, for example, see here that they, um, here in the morning, they, they eat breakfast usually, or they, it, it would be helpful for them to eat breakfast uh, and plan the day and get some, get some structure into their day, and everything else is a bit later. And if you, for example, compare this to the lion, the lion, the time of the exercise for him is recommended more like in the afternoon, evening. Why? Because if you are so energetic in the morning already, it makes much more sense to sit down and get some quality work done. As opposed to if you're someone who has like a hard time waking up in the morning, it's actually smarter to go to the gym because then you're like getting that boost from the gym in alertness and focus, and then you go into your work day. While the lion is like, okay, why would you waste your time in the gym if you could already get quality work done in the morning because you're super focused, and then when you're already losing the focus a bit in the afternoon, 
you then go into the gym and then you get a little bit of a boost back from coming from the gym, right? So this just gives you a rough idea that depending on you individually, there is a per perfect time or a best time to do things like exercising, when do you eat and these types of things, okay? That's just a rough idea, okay? One thing I want to add, a lot of guys tell me, yeah, I'm a wolf. Of course, I'm a wolf. But you have to be careful because a lot of guys, they just have bad habits. They just have, they just have that, one second, they, they have screens in their face all evening, which keeps them awake and they think, I'm a wolf, I'm a wolf. No, you're not, you're probably not. But the thing is just to really find that out, what you should do is you should live as close to nature, to no, natural light habits as possible, meaning remove all artificial lights in the evening we talk about that in a second, and then you really figure out when you get tired, right? And then you figure out your real uh, chronotype. Yeah. Yeah, I was just gonna say, like, you can actually nowadays do DNA tests, and the DNA tests will tell you which which, which one you are. Yeah. So that's that will also help if you don't know what you are. The DNA test will actually. Like, is the is twenty three and me? Is that twenty three and me? That's what I did. Yeah. Is they they tell you that? Yeah. yeah. Tell me that, yeah. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. So that's that's another one that will help you. Yeah. All right, guys. So. If you want to write that down, 23andMe is a DNA test. I did that one as well. But they only give you limited data, actually. They're only allowed to tell you some things, but then you can export the raw data into other tools and so on. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, so second point. Did that one make sense for you guys? Any questions on the chronotypes? Everybody good? Perfect. If not, write questions down so we have a Q&A later. Second point is dialing in your circadian rhythm. Let's ask this, who knows what the circadian rhythm is? Anybody circadian rhythm? Circadian rhythm, circadian rhythm. Okay, let me explain. So circadian rhythm is basically like an internal clock. And there's no clock sitting, but it basically means that your body keeps track of what time it is because of the signals it gets from the environment. So when there's a lot of light coming into your eye, your body thinks it oh, must be day now, right? Because the light produces certain hormones. You get light in the eye and then signal to the brain, oh, let's, let's produce cortisol, let's be awake. No light, oh, it's probably darkness now, let's do some melatonin so we fall asleep. That's circadian rhythm in a nutshell, right? So that would help you to, it tells your body what time should I sleep. And the more dialed in that is, so the more regular, the more consistent that is, the better your sleep will be because your body loves predictability. If it knows, wow, the light will be gone at 8 p.m., then I can pump my melatonin. And the more melatonin you have, the better will be your sleep and the deeper your sleep will be. Okay, so the, it loves predictability. And that's why you should have the number one goal for good sleep is consistent sleep, consistent sleep schedule. I could tell you all the best hacks now and try magnesium and have you tried the aura ring and so on. But I would be fooling you because actually the most important thing is that you sleep as consistently as you can. Means same bedtime, same wake up time. That's the most important thing. And then how do we achieve that? Well, we're gonna talk about that, but that's the real goal because the more consistent, the better you sleep, okay? So how do we dial that in? With light, nutshell, a lot in the morning, little in the evening. So you want to get a lot of light in the morning to tell your body, hey, it's time to be awake. And you want to give it little light in the evening so the body learns, hey, it's time to wind down. Okay? And let me show you a few things that you can do here. That's actually stuff that I'm doing myself. So that's a picture of, of, of the Canary Islands, Tenerife. And the first and most important thing is catch as many sunlights sunlight during the day and many sunrises and sunsets as you can. There's like, if you guys are really interest, interested into all of that stuff and the science behind, I can recommend you the Uberman Lab podcast by Andrew Uberman. Like, he goes really into all the depth, three hours about the reason science and so on, if you're like a, a geek like me. Um, but what he says is that the more sunlight you get, the better your circadian rhythm will be, okay? So what does it mean for you guys? Do a morning walk. Like if you go to the office or something, walk there, take the bicycle or something like this, or just walk around the house for some time in the morning. Super important, like morning walk, so good for the rhythm. It helps you also get your mind free. It helps you not start the day in a reactive mode. Super important. And then in the evenings, it's the other way around. I wanna show you this one as well. 
This is like um, in my office, this is a video light. It's like a really, a, a, it's like a, like a light dome, like, a, like a, a really big video light. And even if it's a cloudy day, something like this can be helpful. So if you, for example, uh, live in, let's say, Austria or Germany, and the winter is really sad, having a big light like this is not the best uh, compared to the sun, but it's still better than no light, right? And blasting that in your face in the morning is pretty good to get you uh, to wake you up. And then in the evening, I have this beautiful ones here. It's what I wear in the evening. Looks super sexy with this. Oh, everything's so orange. <laughs> and this is basically a super strong uh, blue light filter. It's quite orange. And um, the idea is that in the evening, blue light keeps you quite awake because of, because of the wavelength, right? It keeps you more awake. And that's why you want to reduce the blue light exposure. The thing is, this is just the tool. But what you can implement immediately, even if you don't have such a thing, you have to dim the lights, meaning reduce the light. Because even if it's a red light or something, if it's too bright, it's not good, OK? Dim the lights in the evening. Again, it's like the sun. You want to make sure that you emulate natural light habits. You know, In the morning, a lot of light. In the evening, uh, no light. Davorin. Uh, the thing with the smartphones, there are blue light filters. Is this working, or is it not that good? I would definitely uh, set it on. So directly you can, in, in most new smartphones, you can definitely activate it, schedule it. I would set it for like 6, 7 p.m. to, to kick in and, and, and a strongest level, definitely uh, the blue light filter. Um, but the, the thing is, again, if your screen is too bright, it, it, it's not going to make much difference. It's also about the brightness of your screen. Because let's say it's 10 p.m., you have the blue light filter on, but a super bright uh, screen in your face, it will also keep you awake and re reduce melatonin. OK, so that's also super important. All right, then the other two points are to move and hydrate in the morning and during the day and track your steps. Why is that important? Again, everything you do during the day will affect how you sleep in the evening. That's like so powerful. One second. Um, if you move in the morning, you can combine this with the morning walk. You drink, for example, I always drink like uh, 800 milliliter to a liter of water with some lemon and salt and so on. And then morning walk combined with um, you know, some mindfulness exercise and so on. And just taking more breaks during the day, taking more walks after lunch walks and so on, going outside for a bit and so on, will all improve the hormones through the light and therefore your sleep in the evening. Okay. Yeah. Just a question: If you hydrate too much in the night, is is it bad for your sleep or not? Yeah, will will most likely be uh, bad. It's not like that you shouldn't drink anything in the evening, but the the rule of thumb is like try to shift your hydration more towards the first half of the day, like a lot in the morning, a lot in the early hours of the day, and then still still drinking something in the afternoon, but then less and less towards the evening. If you have a healthy bladder. Usually, you shouldn't wake up from drinking too much. If you just, yeah, if you, unless you overkill. If I drink those two bottles before bed, it would probably be waking me up. There's too much pressure. But then, usually people think, oh, I have to wake up because I have to pee. But actually, you wake up because your sleep is not deep, and then you have to pee. Because, oh, yeah, let me go to pee now, right? So that's usually how it goes. And then also lifting heavy, going to the gym, again, st stimulates uh, Testosterone stimulates growth hormones, which then will help you also with your sleep in the evening. So the big message for you guys is everything you do during the day, kind of everything, affects your sleep in the evening. Right? So it's not, not isolated. Yeah. Lifting heavier than a standard, like in the evening or in the morning? In, in general. In general. So in general, just it doesn't really matter what time. And some people say, or there's some studies which show you that for some people it's not good to lift too heavy too late. It keeps the heart rate up and so on, they don't fall asleep. But for most people, it doesn't make too much of a difference. For them, it's more important to do it consistently, right? To, to just do sports and, and workouts consistently. OK, yeah. If I, if I am a bull, OK, and my performance peak is more in the afternoon, yeah. but I don't have the possibility to train in the afternoon, I have it in the morning, is this Better than nothing, or what? Do you Definitely, mean? it's better than nothing. The best time to train is when you do it, con when you can do it consistently, 
And then you can still do other uh, shorter types of workouts or shorter types of movements um, during the day. You can simply get like a, a rubber band, a yoga mat, have it next to your office, and then you have five minute break, you go on the yoga mat, do some stretch or do some rubber band exercises, just shake up your shoulders a bit. That stuff already is super amazing because that compounds over time to get you more moving and so on. Okay, yep, yeah. yeah. Uh, drinking water uh, directly before going to bed and after waking up, uh, how much would you recommend? Yes, so like I said here, um, I wouldn't drink so much directly before bed. Like if you want to drink something, a little hack for some people, chamomile tea is really nice. Like uh, chamomile, Camilla of Deutsch. Uh, chamomile, I don't know, do we have Spanish people here? Yeah, some. I don't know how it is in Spanish. <laughs> Camomilla, Camomilla, something like this, I think. You don't have to take it uh, that accurately that you have to track how much exactly you drink in the evening. That's not sustainable anyway. Just focus on drinking more in the early part of the day, less in the afternoon in the evening, that's it. And just more in the morning directly when waking up. Because hydration is another, in German, they, they even use the German word Zeitgeber, they, which means basically it gives your body the, the time, it tells what time it is. And uh, uh, water is one of those. Water, movement, light are the strongest ones that dial in the circadian rhythm. All right, cool. Then uh, how do we get this dialed in now? Well, you need a solid evening routine. That's the most important thing. And that number one thing, shut down time. That's like the most important thing for, for everybody. It's also the most difficult thing nowadays because yeah, YouTube is so much fun and Slack is always calling or like sending you notifications and there's stuff in Instagram and so on. But the problem is it's just super addictive and then what's gonna happen, you stay at the screen for longer, light affects your, your sleep and your sleep is just, just not as good as it could be or should be. And that's why what helps the most is you define, okay, I will, let's say you plan to go to bed at, let's say, 11 p.m., okay? To make it sustainable, let's not do anything crazy. Let's just say, for now, for starters, 10 p.m. is your shutdown time. What you do then is you program, let, let me tell you a hack to make this super proof. You get an app blocker, you program it to kick you out of all apps at 10 p.m. There's some phones that allow you even to schedule in the airplane mode to kick in automatically at 10 p.m. And then, like, you're going to be tired in the evening and just want to watch some stuff, but you're going kick, to be kicked out. You cannot trust yourself there. You need to have systems that help you to be kicked out, right? And that way you make this bulletproof, and then you have some form of other habits that you do that wind you down more. Right, and I'll show you a few things. We have here, um, well, let's talk about that in a second. Mobility work and, and relaxation. So for example, everything that is related to uh, yoga, meditation, journaling, listening to an audio book, these types of things, right? Just relaxing stuff with, with less light. That's what you then do in that hour from 10 to 11. Before that, you can still watch your movies and whatever you want, right? But for starters, that would be already so helpful if you didn't, in the last 15 minutes before bed, like watch stuff or check the phone and so on, will help you immensely with your sleep. The other thing is early dinner, right? I know you guys in Spain especially <laughs> do that uh, not so much, but it's just the fact that if you eat, you can measure this. I, I see this all the time on the Aura Ring. Uh, I saw, I've seen it also last night, because last night I've also eaten later than I usually do. And it keeps your heart rate elevated when your heart rate, because the digestion is active. And when the heart rate is elevated, your deep sleep is not as deep as it could be. Okay? So that's why usually eat earlier. And if you do eat a bit later, eat less. That's what I tried to do yesterday. I was super hungry. So I like, had to do a balance a bit. <laughs> but, but eating a bit less, right? That is, that is kind of the, 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 the trick here. And for the type of... Um, I'm going to show you some, what, what I always do. I have this, this guy here, and I'll show you some more on the next slide. Let's actually go here. These are some, some tools that are super helpful and that's super underrated in the entrepreneur community. Most guys don't know about this stuff. 
but it's super helpful because especially we're all kind of desk warriors. We all work at the desk. And what happens is you, your, your body gets super tight, right? You have some, some people, I had lots of clients who develop headaches, tension headaches, um, or just a pain in the shoulders, pain in the hips and things like that just from sitting too much. And what, how you can kill two birds with one stone is by doing something like this in the evening because A, it helps you to be more uh, pain-free and feel better in your body. Plus, on the other hand, it helps your body to relax and wind down and your sleep is better and deeper. Okay, so a few things. This is a lacrosse ball. This is a, like a sport in the US. It's the perfect, perfect type of uh, firmness. Basically, what you can do, you can lay on this and, for example, lay on your back and roll out certain parts or you do it like, like Mr. Kelly's stirrette here, uh, rolling out especially the front of the shoulders here. You can also just go like to a wall, that's what I do a lot, and lean here and then basically release that muscle. And then just hold that muscle for a while. Or I sometimes do it even here on the neck. It's really painful. Yeah. Oh yeah. I'll do that tonight a bit more again. And, and, but this really helps you to, um, it actually unstresses you. It releases stress. And you can also just get like, you probably know those from the gym, a foam roller, or like a ball like this, or a softball. Or this one is super cool, that's called a back buddy. It's like a tool I have at home. And this is something where you can, as you see, release tight knots you have here in the neck, in the lower back, shoulder areas, and so on. Okay, and how can you stack this together? What we have at home, we have like a really big carpet, super comfortable. And then in the evening, I have that stuff laying there. And then we just, you know, we either we uh, finish watching, watching something or we listen to something or we do a meditation. And then in that same time, we just do some, some releasing or we just talk about the day or something like this, right? Combining with some relaxing stuff. And then it's super easy and help you, it will help you with your sleep. All right, cool. Then let's talk about optimizing your bedroom. Actually, should I send this? How am I doing with time? Did anybody track the time, how much I talked so far? Do I see this here? Does the moderator's job seem just keep Anyway, no, I'll, I'll send it to you guys later into the, um, into the WhatsApp group. But, well, just quick story. We had like, we got a room in this hotel, which was like for two people, a 140 bed. So super small. And so we did kind of uh, bedroom optimization here in the hotel in action. We changed earlier today, we changed the room. We got a bigger bed now. I changed also the pillows and so on. So you can actually do that when you also travel by asking the hotels and so on, because it's super important that you find a bed that you feel comfortable in, okay? And so to give you some examples, what should the bedroom be? Should be cool. That's super important for, your, for the depth of your sleep. Whose bedroom was cool last night? Okay, around, around half. Yeah, for us it was d d way too hot. It was way too hot. Uh, we were like awake until four or something until we realized, oh, there's an AC. <laughs> Good. Then we turned on the AC. The problem is with the AC, it makes the air super dry. And then you, 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 you can't really breathe properly. So then we turned off, we, we opened the window, but then there was the street with a lot of noisy cars. <laughs> So you can imagine, right? But in an ideal world, you, you can do it like this. You, you cool down the room, depends on where you live, by keeping the window open during the day. That's very helpful. Or you keep it open during the night, and then another option would be to use white noise if you have some noise outside, like having a white noise machine that filters out the noise, or you sleep with earplugs. <coughs> earplugs is not recommended long term because of the earwax and so on, but it's like a short term solution for hotels and so on. Then it should be very dark. They, they did another study, which they talked about on, the, on, the, on that podcast, where they were measuring people with like a dimly lit room, just, just like a few candles, basically. And the sleep quality was already much worse compared to people with a completely dark room, just by a little bit of light in there. And you guys, even, maybe you think, oh, I can sleep with like a bit of light on, no problem. But the sleep quality usually will be worse. Okay, so it's really important that you block out as much light as possible. 
And then disturbing sounds, we talked about this, either white noise or earplugs or moving and moving to the countryside. Um, air quality, also super important. Make sure the air is not too dry. Um, best case is you keep the windows open, that's the best. Plants can also help, but it doesn't do that much either. So more, more like there's also tools like air washers and so on. That's also something to check. And big rule, no screens in the bedroom. Because again, if you keep that rule, it's much easier to keep that separation. And your brain always associates environment with activity. So when you have your laptop in the bed, it doesn't really know, am I going to work now? Should I be calm? Should I be in focus mode? Or what's going on? But if you reserve the bed for relaxation, for sex, then the brain knows uh, what's going on, right? So you're not going to be messing that up with work, all right? So that's why, um, apart from this, another one is Best case, have a natural or no alarm at all. That's even better for waking up. So best case is you wake up with the birds, for example, and you just wake up naturally. Or another tool is, I can show you here, something like this can be helpful. But don't choose the model which has these thingies here if you can't turn them off. Like, that's weird. But this is, these are the ones which help you to wake up more naturally because it takes like half an hour and the thing goes from this brightness to this and, and simulates the sunrise. And that's much better than waking up like a truck honk, like, dude, dude, wake up, wake up. It's like directly stress. So that's not, not so good. All right, let me show you this, this little uh, overview. This gives you some more ideas what, what really is important. You can have an air humidifier, as we talked about in there, blackout curtains. Temperature should be 18 to 20, 22 degrees. Salt lamps can also be nice for the, for the environment, for the, for the vibe. Magnesium can be helpful. And um, yeah, these are some other things. Plants can be helpful. Here it says phone in airplane mode. No, 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 that's wrong. Don't keep the phone in the, in the room. And um, yeah, and other things are there, all right? So let's talk about sleep position and mattress. That's step number five, okay? So, who, okay, let's, let's talk about this. Who of you guys sleeps regularly on the back? Not so many, few, one, two, five maybe, right? Five on the back. Who sleeps on the side usually? Yeah, the big majority. Who sleeps on the belly? All right, a few guys, yeah, all right. So mostly side, a little bit uh, belly, and a little bit uh, back. So for your, um, for your body itself, back sleeping is actually ideal. Why? Because your, your legs, when you sleep on the side, your legs are usually like this, and you're already sitting all day, and these muscles get really short over time. And if you, if you lay on your back, the body has time to really decompress because it's laying like this. So that's ideal. The thing is, you connect the sleep position also with safety. And this embryo thing, you know, like this, it feels super safe, right? And that's why it's super difficult to, to get used to a different position. So that is something you can test, but it's really difficult and you need months for this to, to, to really change the sleep position, okay? But what can you do if you want to work the best way? Side sleeping needs adapt adaptations. I'll show you that in a second. Um, and for the belly sleepers, be careful, because the problem is when you sleep on your bed, on your, let's say you lay here, where's the head, right? You're not gonna sleep like this, right? So you're gonna sleep like this or like this, unless you sleep on a massage table. <laughs> you sleep. That would be ideal, guys, sleep on a massage table. No, but you don't. So, and the problem is that there's the neck problems can occur over time when you sleep like this the whole time, right? That's the, that's the issue. That's why back sleeping, uh, belly sleeping is not so, not so recommended. <laughs> Some Wim Hof action happening here. All right. Let's take, let's take a quick pause. Everybody can drink something. Let me wait until they, they're finished. Oh, good. That was quick. <laughs> So that's a big point I want to make. Don't save on a high quality mattress. Uh, spend money there. You spend a lot of money on, on masterminds, on, 
on ads, pay yourself a salary, <laughs> pay some tax on this, doesn't matter, and then buy a good mattress, guys. <laughs> so that's super important. But the, the type of mattress depends a lot on the sleep position. If you sleep on the back, your mattress can be quite hard because you don't have to sink in so much. So the quality is not that important. Should still be a good one, but it's not that important. If you sleep on the side, it's quite important. And I'll show you why. Check this out. That's me here a few years ago. And that's just here a mattress that actually is a mattress topper, which was a quite a hard mattress. And as you can see, the shoulder here and the hip are not really sinking in that much, right? And the, that's why if you, it's not entirely well the painting, but the, it goes more like this. It goes a little bit of curve here, the spine, right? And this is, this is actually an issue because ideally your shoulder would be sinking in more here. This would be sinking in more, and then you have a straight spine. So now what can you do? You can either change the mattress, which would be ideal, or you could also test a few adaptions. It works not for everybody, but it can be worth a try. You basically push a pillow under your, um, your rib cage, and another trick would be to have a pillow between your knees and to hug a pillow in the front, right? This is actually helpful because the more stable your, your spine is, the, the better your sleep will be the more deep the body can go into the sleep because it feels protected, okay? So think about this, what you can do immediately, either with a tripod or a friend or a partner, have them take a picture of your usual sleep position and see if like maybe the pillow should be higher or lower, maybe you should do some adaptions with the mattress, okay? That is also a super important thing. You do it once, buy a better mattress, do adaptions and immediate fix for sleep quality. Okay, number six, reduce stress. Finish work earlier, guys. Who resonates with this? Who thinks they should finish work earlier? Wow, oh, I wasn't expecting that, so <laughs> a lot of guys. No, the thing is this, what helps you with better sleep, it's not about, I hope you all guys enjoy your work, right? I hope that's the case. But even if you love what you do, there's still things that stress you, like there's a fire happening or something. It doesn't matter if you love what you do. And if you wanna go to sleep, well, it will impact your sleep, right? So that's why it's better to not carry your work so much into the evening. And what helps here is to have what I call an end of work ritual and a clear separation between work and uh, time outside of business. What you can do there is, for example, best case, you have a separation between where you work and where your living environment is, can be either in a home office that's separate or like an external office. And then you don't work when you chill on the couch, for example. Of course, with the phones and so on, it's difficult. That's why you need app lockers and so on, so you're not getting triggered by emails and all that stuff. But if you have a ritual where you say, okay, I put that into my calendar, I plan tomorrow today, I plan what I will do tomorrow, what's my one thing, and then I will finish work for today. I close the door, put everything away, write down maybe some thoughts, some worries that I have or what I will deal with tomorrow. You have a much better time letting go because you know, okay, it's taken care of, I looked at the calendar, it's scheduled in there, boom, enough for today. Okay, so that's very helpful for, for having less stress and, and sleeping better. And then, what do you do in the evening? Again, relaxation, breathing exercises can be helpful. I'll show you that in a second. And this type of evening wind down after you have the shutdown time. Okay, so here are a few examples. A lot of people, they love uh, essential oils. And you can put them either on the, on the pillow even or you have them, for example, when you take a shower in the evenings, you can also use some of them or a bathtub in the bathtub. Or what we like to use as well is like incense sticks. It can also help you because it's another trigger for your brain. You put on this, this stick in your living room and it helps you to wind down, helps you to relax. Saunas are amazing as well, especially let's say you train in the evening at 6, 7 p.m. and then go after that into the sauna amazing amazing for winding down if you for example do a cold plunge or a cold shower after that as well great great for sleep quality and apart from this we said journaling writing down worries writing down thoughts really helps in the evening plus belly breathing belly breathing means that you focus on you can do that by by sitting down and you or by laying down even um, let me show you how you can do that easily 
in the evenings, you can uh, lay on the floor and have your legs up like this, like in 90, in 90 degrees, you know, and, or you put it on the couch or something. That helps you to breathe more into your belly. And by the belly, we mean the diaphragm, which helps you to reduce the stress levels as well. So just for example, how can you stack this? You have a carpet, get a comfortable carpet in your living room that you love laying on. Put some, some, uh, some tools like for, for, uh, for stretching and so on on there. And then you can just, you know, listen to an audiobook, listen to a podcast in the evening, have the legs on the couch, breathe a bit, do some, some stretching and so on. It takes like 15 minutes, super relaxing, and your sleep will be much better. Okay, so these are like a few easy hacks you can implement. All right, then seventh step, we're getting closer to the end. We set the late dinner. That's super important for the food. And then also it's important what you eat. So not only the time, but also what. So usually heavy foods in the evening, like yesterday the barbecue, for example, <laughs> not that great for sleep quality. Why? Because it needs simply, again, more digestive activity, more blood in your, in your stomach to digest that. And therefore the deep sleep will be impacted usually by that. And also during the day, you want to keep blood sugar levels as stable as you can. So that means, for example, for lunch, eating lighter things, more like a salad with some protein and so on, helps you again also with the quality in the evening. And for the evening, what should you eat then? Quality nutrients, again, you're, that leads us to diet itself. If your diet is not good, your body, again, misses the nutrients it needs to produce hormones like melatonin and serotonin and so on. So that's why it's important that even if you eat at the right time, but you eat only junk food, your body, again, doesn't have the right um, tools it needs to build proper hormones, right? What are quality nutrients? I can recommend you try this for yourself. Eat two kiwis in the evenings. They have great, great nutrients for sleep. And then also things like quinoa, sweet potatoes, and so on, more carbs in the evening is actually really good for, for sleep, okay? Cool, and then our favorite topic, coffee intake, yeah. Okay, let's do a quick survey. Who drinks coffee? Everybody, yes, kind of everybody. Who drinks one cup per day? A few. Two cups per day? A few. Three cups per day? Four cups per day? Marcel? <laughs> More than four cups per day? <laughs> Petri, yeah. So the thing is, what happens with coffee is you're borrowing energy from the future. Because it, it's, it's like that, because you're blocking basically receptors which are responsible for you to fall asleep and recover. So it's not something you can do all the time. That's why a lot of people, they get more and more addicted to it because they're feeling sleepier more often than not. They need, start to need the coffee more. And that's why I recommend to try to reduce the coffee a bit. If you drink one coffee per day or so, it's no problem at all, right? It's totally fine. But the thing is, you should rather reserve the coffee for the times when you have an emergency, like you didn't sleep well, and then you boost some coffee to get out of that, and then you go back to a normal dose. It's much more sustainable for hormone health long term. Okay, then how to get started with all of that stuff? A lot of information. So what I would recommend you for, for you guys to have a few things that you can Im immediately implement so you're not overwhelmed. So what are the steps? You have to make a plan, right? So you all have pen and paper here. Decide on the few fixes that I described that you feel like are most important for you right now, right? Make yourself a plan, write down two, three things you're gonna implement. Then, as I said, what are the most important first fixes to make, right? Define those. And then create like a step-by-step -step roadmap. The biggest problem I see is people, they want everything directly. Okay, I'm gonna have this amazing routine tomorrow, sleep well, and then you do it for a few days and then you fall off again, right? So that's not gonna help either. So think about what are the first things that you will implement and how will you implement them? Create a little roadmap, what are the steps, the adaptions you make, how will you make it easy for yourself, right? Think smart how you implement those habits. And then track your new habits and progress, that can be super motivating when you like have a habit tracker or you write that in your journal and so on. And then um, 
make sure that you get support and accountability. So that can mean you get like an accountability buddy here from the mastermind that you check in with each other or you, uh, you basically talk to your girlfriend about it, right? And you, you do these things together, which I recommend anyway, because otherwise it would be super difficult to do all of that long term if you live with someone and you're not in line with that, okay? And then finally, if you guys want help with that, you can also check this out. So just quickly about that, we have a three months coaching program where we do exactly that. And we help you master your mindset, master your energy, productivity, and consistency so that you can make more money, have more time, and have less stress, all right? And so if you're interested in that, you know, just go to my Instagram. I hope we're already connected there. You can just send me a DM with the word info. We can talk about how that would uh, look like for you. Or you can also check out my website, killianmarket.com. There's also case studies and stuff and then results and so on in there. And schedule a game plan there with me as well. Okay, and special bonus offer, <laughs> limited scarcity and urgency. No, I'm kidding. Now, if you, if you become a client by end of this month, you can actually attend our next consistent performance mastermind live event for free. And then you can do ice bathing with Marcel. No, 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 no. Thank you, everybody. Awesome. Any questions, anybody? Yes, about the, the white stuff. Yeah. Can you, can you recommend, does it, does it make a difference on how, what kind of like, uh, speaker or device you're playing it from? Like, does it, uh, yeah. I've tried like, some random white noise from a phone. Yeah. <coughs> and uh, at least character, and also the white noise was just a clip that I found from YouTube, so I have no idea the yeah. difference in quality and such. Yeah. But that didn't work for me at all. There is dedicated machines, which are white, white noise machines that you can actually build into your uh, bedroom. And uh, apart from this, Marcel is still there all the time. <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh -oh. for the... Anyway, um, there's machines you can build in there. For some people, using the phone would be not so helpful because, again, it would trigger you to check the phone. What you could do, there's, there's ways to set up, for example, uh, an Amazon Echo or, or these home pods or these types of things. And you can actually program them in to play a certain noise at a certain time, for example. And there's also automations you can do that either you speak with them, hey Alexa, turn down the light, right? Or there's even automations where you have when you have the, the Philips U lights that they can you can program them to t to dim themselves at certain times. You can do stuff like this and you could do the same thing with, um, with the white noise, but the, the, the noise itself that works for you, that's super individual. I can't answer that for you. You would need to test different tracks, different intensities, and so on to find something that works for you. Right? For some people, it's also a nature stuff that works better than white noise. For example, rainfall or sound of ocean waves and so on. That can help as well. All right. Any questions? Anybody left? Yeah, Nicola. What about sleeping on a cold mattress? On a cold? On a cold mattress. Yeah, it's perfect. perfect. It's great. There's even machines like the chili pad, which are made for you to keep your mattress cool, especially if you sleep in summer when it's super hot. Sleeping on a cool mattress is really good. So keep, keep the room and the mattress as cool as you can. And uh, yeah, it helps your sleep quality. All right, anybody else? Are we good? <laughs>